AQA, A-level physics. This is for the engineering option. And this is my fifth video in this playlist. And it's about angular momentum. This is what the specification says you need to know. Let's just dive in. So momentum, mass times velocity. So there's an object, this fella running along mass m velocity v his linear momentum is mv and that is kilogram meters per second and guess what here's an object which is rotating uh, it has a moment of inertia i about the particular axis its angular velocity is omega and it has angular momentum i omega uh, and that's kilogram meters squared uh, r times radians per second. Or we'll see Newton meter seconds. Now, there's angular momentum. There's also angular impulse. Let's look at the linear one first. F equals delta mv over t, which is basically Newton's second law. And you will remember if we rearrange that, we get F times delta T equals delta MV. So the impulse of a force, F times delta T, Newton seconds, the impulse of a force produces a certain change in momentum and F delta T is delta MV. Okay, an impulse produces a change in momentum. Now look at this. T is, we said it's I alpha, so we can write that as delta I omega over delta T. Uh, and I omega, we know now, is angular momentum. So rearranging this, we get big T torque times delta T, change in time, equals I delta omega, or delta I omega. Uh, and we can call this the angular impulse and an angular impulse equals the change in angular momentum. This uh, young lady is throwing a Frisbee, so she applies an angular impulse to the Frisbee and she gives it angular momentum. An angular impulse produces a change in angular momentum. It's all analogous, isn't it? All these equations are so similar. Let's have a go at a couple of examples. So this is a, a gym rowing machine. And in there, there's a flywheel, which has a certain moment of inertia. Uh, and let's say a steady torque of five Newton meters is applied to the flywheel for 1.2 seconds. So what angular impulse does that torque produce and how much its angular velocity increases, assuming no frictional torque? Have a go yourself, pen, paper, calculator, and the answers are, okay. So angular impulse, torque times delta T, five times 1.2, six Newton meter seconds. Uh, and then delta omega, using the other equation, is the angular impulse divided by the moment of inertia, 15 radians per second will be the change in omega, delta omega. Now, this is a very, very common type of question that you might get. There's loads of questions like this. Um, why does the ice skater, you've seen people spinning around on ice and they do these uh, spins really, really fast. And what they do is they tuck their arms and their leg in uh, and they spin faster and faster when they do that. And then when they put their arms out again, they slow down. Now, why? Why does the ice skater spin faster when she tucks her arms and leg in? And the answer is conservation of angular momentum. Now, just as linear momentum is conserved, well, angular momentum is conserved as well. Uh, if no external moments act on the system, then its total angular momentum must be constant. I did actually see a past paper question, state the principle of conservation of angular momentum. Chuck out that sentence, be able to write it down. 
Okay. Now, if no external moments act on the system, there will be a little bit of friction at the bottom where the skate is touching the ice. Okay, but ignoring that, let's not worry too much about that. When she makes her moment of inertia smaller by bringing uh, the mass of her arms and things closer to the central axis, yeah, the axis of rotation, her angular velocity will increase. What other examples in sport can you think of where an athlete tucks themselves in so that they spin faster? You should be able to think of a few of them. Here's another few interesting ideas. Uh, have a think about these. Why does this helicopter need a, a tail rotor? Any idea? Well, I'll tell you if you don't know. Well, basically, when the uh, rotor blades accelerate, so if these rotor blades are going to spin round that way, then from conservation of angular momentum, that means that the helicopter is going to start spinning around the other way and you don't really want that. So what you do is you apply another torque by having this tail rotor uh, and that balances the torque uh, due to the fact that the blades are accelerating. Basically, if that tail rotor wasn't there, if the, the blades speeded up or slowed down, then the helicopter would in the opposite sense. Uh, the second one, why do planets in orbit around the, the sun travel slower when they are further away from the sun? Well, um, have a think about that. Again, you should remember that if it's uh, um, just consider it to be a point mass, then the moment of inertia is m r squared. That's the moment of inertia. Now, if the planet is further away from the sun, then the moment of inertia is bigger. So from conservation of angular momentum, the angular velocity must be smaller. And that's why they travel slower when they're further away from the sun. Uh, when I was doing the astronomy videos, uh, I did a video about neutron stars and neutron stars spin around very, very fast maybe a hundred times a second, okay? Why do they spin very fast? Well, they've come from a very, very large star which has collapsed and become very small. So its moment of inertia has got much, 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 much smaller very quickly. So these things, their angular velocity must be very, very big from conservation of angular momentum. Right. Have a go at this question. See what you make of it. Read it yourself. Have a go at it. A potter's wheel spinning round freely and you, you drop a lump of clay on it. It slows down. OK, work this out for yourself. And the answers are. There you go. So the lump of clay I've said is a point mass. I've worked out its moment of inertia. I've worked out the increase in the moment of inertia and so the decrease in the angular velocity, well, there's the new angular velocity there.